so universe formation after a huge explosion called what is the name big bang after the big bang explosion stars formed galaxies formed and different planets also formed now during this process huge clouds or dust called what is the name nebula it is the mother of all star formation and different planets formation now we need to understand this aspect for today's class now this nebula when it's rotating around the galaxy and suppose if it is earth earth is rotating on its own self and also around the sun what is the motion around its own axis rotation, rotation. around the sun rotation. revolution now when nebula is continuously in motion now it is gas form but today on earth we see different metals also iron also copper also what is the first metal used by human beings copper, copper. that's why we also call some of the stone ages like chalcolithic periods so how come copper iron tin silver all these things came into being so initially everything was like a cloud like in gaseous form this is the reason behind it suppose when you when you see the milk milk is in liquid form but when you churn the milk then we get butter so different form is coming out of continuous rotation and revolution so this is the same thing when it is in motion for billions of years now this gaseous form and also some of the universe dust that gets converted into solid so because of this solid substance emerges some becomes liquid and some continues to be gas solid liquid gas now if we see how it rotates now this solid material has become continents on the earth different continents we have seen seven continents and liquid this become hydrosphere and some gas atmosphere now this is only on the surface of the earth we were discussing only what is there on the surface of the earth but today we have to see something what is happening deep inside the earth also because the elements which are causing inside motion are the reason behind the continents and later water formation so mainly we will talk about today different continents how they are forming now let's go to this now this is the nebula in the initial stage of the universe formation now when you see when it is rotating around the axis or around orbit then it is in continuous motion now this particular motion goes on for billions of years now when it is rotating now you can see some of the elements get solidified after some time due to condensation and whenever there is substance formation suppose if you throw stone in the water what will happen to the stone will it float or it will go down it will go down it will sink because of its weight same will happen here also the heavier materials will enter into the deep and the lighter material will stay on the top side 
Now this is where our earth interior formation will come. Now you need to just note down. layers of the earth today topic is layers of the earth so now did you get some idea how different solid substances are forming inside the earth Now if you take the air, the heaviest minerals and metals are going to stay in the deep down of the sphere. Now this is called core. This is called core, a yes, round. The next level is called mantle. There are three layers total and top one is crust. Online students, are you writing this? The deepest one is the core, on top of it mantle and on top of it crust. Now so far whatever we have seen in the last class, we have seen seven continents. We were talking about only the crust part and on the crust different uh, continents formed and different oceans also formed. Now within crust, mantle and core again some kind of divisions are there based on the different chemical properties and physical properties. Within core also, some part is liquid, some part is solid. Within mantle also, some part is solid, some part is uh, semi-liquid. Now that one, you just we will take only this. Now if you take This is inner core. Inner core, then it will be outer core. mantle itself you will get uh, two important layers this also mantle this also mantle this also mantle now it has a separate name called asthenosphere Now on top of it is crust. This is how our earth completely segregated into different layers. Three major parts, core, mantle, crust. Again within core we have two layers, inner, outer. In mantle, mantle part, lower mantle, upper mantle, that is asthenosphere, then again in the crust. Now the inner core part is, this is solid. The innermost is solid. The 
the outer core is in liquid form now this crust solid or liquid it is solid with respect to mantle is very important now now here asthenosphere is there that is in liquid form that is not complete liquid we call it's like a plastic so it's like a viscous material it is also a liquid form but we can use viscous liquid now this lower mantle is solid so the innermost part solid or liquid solid on top of it liquid on top of it solid on top of it so on top of it crust solid so up to this clear now next comes here nowhere we are saying any word called lithosphere did we say any term called lithosphere here but in the last class we were discussing about lithosphere now here there is a layer on the top of asthenosphere that is in solid form so that is the upper most part of mantle uppermost part now this is where the crust and uppermost part is called lithosphere crust plus uppermost mantle i will give you some important points also first you try to understand so innermost is the solid next becomes liquid now here within core we have two layers inner core and outer core one is solid another one is liquid now next question comes why one is solid why another one is liquid even though the composition of core is same online students is that clear up to this now in order to understand this now we are going to get so many terms in geography these terms like these are very important when we understand about physical geography so first one is like temperature second one is like pressure then there is a term called density these terms we often get in geography unless we get some idea about this it becomes difficult to understand physical geography this is where mcqs will give you confusion in the statements so temperature pressure density now temperature is the measurement of the heat how much amount of heat a body is containing some may be at 0 degree centigrade some may be at 100 degree centigrade some may be at 5000 degree centigrade here if we take the lowest part here the temperature is almost 6000 degree centigrade 
can you imagine if 6000 degree centigrade is there on the crust what will happen to us everything becomes liquid but despite this amount of temperature still it is in solid state that is where this aspect will come because of the amount of pressure because on top of the inner core so much material is there till the crust now you can see up to this one so much amount of air material is there it is not hollow so some material is there that material is causing it so much pressure that pressure even though the temperatures are very high the material can get converted into liquid form but because of pressure it is not converting into liquid but on the top of it it becomes liquid because of the high temperatures now we will see one now it appears only outer side but if you dig deep the core is located around 6000 kilometers so if you start drilling this side now on the other side you will reach after traveling 13000 kilometers so that is the kind of depth inside the earth now around 6000 kilometers the temperatures are 6000 kilo uh, 6000 degree centigrade that's why the temperatures are very high that is making the outer core liquid but because of pressure inner core is becoming solid so these two aspects should be very clear outer core and inner core temperature and pressure now when it comes to density any idea what do you mean by density mass per unit volume suppose if you take balloon suppose this is the size of balloon and this is the size of apple now which is more more weight apple this is balloon even though same volume is occupied but apple is having more weight so same is the condition here also the inner core outer core elements are very heavier even though they occupy the same volume but they are very heavy for example nickel iron these are the elements that are there inside inner core and this is the source of iron metal on top of the crust so today iron is very important one now we may get the con how this iron is coming to the crust if iron is there inside but how iron is coming to the top of it that we will get the that answer we will get now but here that's why this particular is called knife nickel and ferrous so nickel and iron are the two important elements inside core region nickel core nickel knife in inner core or core both core in core but this nickel and iron combination is very solid in skin case of inner core but when it comes to outer core side that is becoming liquid so when you take the iron ore then when you increase the temperature then that becomes very liquid form that is the density part okay now we will see how this particular now do you see this one if you want you can have one more diagram to just represent the distances you cannot write everything in one diagram that's why you have one more diagram you create one more or 
is it difficult or i will draw new one is it okay okay then this is ncert picture only did you understand this You observe the distances. This is 6,378 kilometers, and from here, 5,100 kilometers from top is the solid part of core, and from 2,900 to 5,000 is the liquid part of the core. online students are you drawing this okay what are the metals do we know what is the first metal used by human beings harappan then if you remember harappans what metals do they know bronze they know bronze came after mixing with what tin copper tin mixing bronze alloy will come then any metal what they know silver they know gold they know and in the later vedic time period which metal iron. iron so now you see these are the different type of metals and when it comes to nuclear energy what are the minerals important uranium, uranium thorium i 
and near Kerala coast, there is a mineral called monazite. So this becomes a raw material to extract some of the nuclear energy related materials. So now you see different type of minerals. Some are radioactive in nature and some are neutral and some are in gaseous form. These are metals with respect to metals. If you take gases, what are the important gases? Nitrogen, oxygen, first one hydrogen, helium, then nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide. So mixture of different, again different elements will come. Now if you see these are just if you remove this part, these are individual elements. They are available in the nature. Now these are available on the earth surface itself. Some are there on the earth surface, some are there deep down in the earth. And these gases are available on the atmosphere also. And also within minerals, within metals, these elements are mixed. For example, if you take water as the compound, water is the what is the h2o so it is the mixture of hydrogen and oxygen so in the form of water hydrogen gas and oxygen gas is mixed so this is the chemical reaction and chemical composition now what are the four fundamental forces of the nature do you remember four fundamental natures gravitational Nuclear strong, nuclear weak, electromagnetic. So these are the four important. These four important forces are converting gas into these different type of minerals and gases and different elements. Till 16th and 17th century, we do not know these many elements in the nature. But after the renaissance, now people started experimenting on the nature. Now religion has become secondary, but human nature has become the prime concern. From that time onwards, people started knowing about what is there in the nature, in the natural forces. And at that point of time, different elements were discovered on the earth surface now that later became periodic table this we study in chemistry so in our prelims general science also there so geography gives some idea about uh, geography is the mother of all subjects because if there is no air we never study any of them we never be here now you can see here Do you know where is copper? Yes. CU number? This is copper. What is AG? Silver. silver. Next one? Gold. gold. So do you see copper, silver, gold are important elements since ancient times. People know those elements. They were extracting from the surface of the earth and they were using because these silver and gold were very shiny in nature. So they started using it as ornament or precious metal. And later gold became important medium of exchange also. So when two civilizations want to exchange trade, gold become the medium of exchange. Do you know what is gold standard in economy? In the modern times, in the post-independence time period, in the old level trade, there is a standard called gold standard with respect to dollar. Do you have any idea what is that? Americans used to say that if you bring the dollar, they will, bring the go they will give you the gold. So that means dollar is equivalent to gold. But they continued up to certain point and later they could not continue that standard. Initially, 
have you heard in ancient times roman gold was being drained into indian subcontinent so similarly when it comes to modern time periods america has accumulated lot of gold before second world war they were having around 2000 tons of gold but gradually it went to 20000 tons of gold now you can imagine their trade and their products made so prosperous this is one of the reasons the for the rise of america as one of the super powers in the world but again they could not maintain this they entered into vietnam war due to cold war and lot of expenditure on the weapons again it came down to 2000 later so that's why up to this point of time they were giving if you bring the dollars they were exchanging dollars with gold but thereafter they told they are not going to give gold for the dollar so they discontinued that particular arrangement this arrangement came in britain woods conference and britain wood conference is also important for foundation of two important organizations what are they world bank and imf so here this shows the kind of importance to gold since ancient times but if we think just in terms of nature that is one of the elements in the nature which is available copper silver gold now if you see this hg what is this mercury now these are solids mercury is in semi liquid state and if you go to this particular point nitrogen oxygen nitrogen oxygen in gaseous form and helium neon argon these are inert gaseous form then here lithium sodium potassium these are now lithium is in news because lithium ion batteries which are useful for electronic vehicles so now electronic vehicles are dependent on lithium but the lithium availability on the earth surface is limited only few countries in mainly in central asian countries it is available that's why central asian countries are occupying geopolitical importance so people will start fighting for some of these elements that's why recently hydrogen gas is in news do you know why hydrogen gas hydrogen energy green hydrogen you might have heard what is green hydrogen yes yes so this hydrogen gas is going to be important element for transportation sector in future for iron industry chemical industry and transportation industry because hydrogen is abundantly available in the nature but so far we don't know how to use the hydrogen hydrogen is the first element in the universe hydrogen is the first element the reason for sun rays the amount of heat generated by sun is when hydrogen is getting converted into helium it is releasing energy so hydrogen is the lifeline of our galaxy hydrogen is there everywhere suppose in water h2o is there hydrogen if we can extract hydrogen then it can be used as battery or it can be used as a energy carrier we are depending on coal and uh, gas and oil from the other countries if we can crack this if we can use the hydrogen because it needs a lot of technological advancement but if we can use it then we can become self reliant in energy sector and also when it comes to climate change we are having have you heard this panchamrut yes, what are the panchamrut okay and it's related to the glasgow summit in glasgow summit prime minister 
said we will follow panchamrut policy to ensure climate friendly economy so in that also one of the reasons why india is promising is the confidence about hydrogen green hydrogen gas and we want to make it a 50% of our energy source comes from renewable sources so these are things but now we are connecting the, all these things we are talking about so many things but the initial every element is organized in this way some are gases some are liquids some are solids all these are elements are available on the earth surface now initially there was no such element there was only hydrogen gas so from hydrogen everything else generated so today also in milky way galaxy still that nebula nebula is the cloud of gas so majority of it uh, hydrogen only so because of rotation and revolution these gases are getting converted into different materials now because of temperature and pressure that's why this becomes when lot of temperature lot of pressure is applied on the material then the composition of the material itself is converting so far okay now we have to understand this i am telling all these things for crust is again divided into two parts one is continental crust another one is oceanic crust and continental crust is mostly made up of silicon plus aluminum this is also called cl and when it comes to oceanic crust silicon plus magnesium, magnesium. magnesium or manganese magnesium Sorry. not manganese Sorry. No, that is chemical form. Generally, we write like sima. I understand, but to spell properly, sima and cl we used to say. <laughs> Magnesium spelling M A G. So in that M A only we take. chemical component is mg cl and sima now you get silicon and aluminum silicon plus magnesium but these are the not the only two elements which are abundant on the earth crust there are many other elements also but mostly is dominated by this so silicon sand is available everywhere so silica silicate and silica comes from mostly sand and other forms now core is made up of nickel and iron now you tell me cl is less dense or sima is less dense for that i just need to give one thing here the upper part is continental crust lower part is oceanic crust cl is less dense cl is less dense lighter that's why it is floating on sima and other elements are floating on nickel and iron because they are the heaviest and they are staying close to the earth core so these are different minerals elements which we get in geography we often get to this you should not get any confusion that how these elements are coming when it comes to minerals we will talk about uh, so many minerals iron also we will see manganese also we will see and copper also we will see so so many minerals and they are distributed across the globe 
and we have to know that the reason behind all these elements are from the primordial universe big bang theory only from there nebula gets converted into different elements and these elements are converted into different other forms because of temperature and pressure temperature pressure always comes in our geography when it comes to atmosphere also when it comes to lithosphere hydrosphere everywhere it will come so up to this fine how many layers of earth are there total innermost one three layers means three only crust mantle core what is lithosphere outermost mantle plus crust this is the combination now this asthenosphere now this is where next topic will come now if you understand up to this then we will go to online students up to this clear now we are moving into then we are seeing lot of land mass here now you have to imagine now this is globe now you just imagine start from the core itself so inner core outer core mantle asthenosphere then uppermost part of the mantle then oceanic crust then continental crust whatever we are seeing this part is continental crust now you have to imagine this globe also now we are going deep inside the earth also when it comes to map pointing we have to visualize the rectangular map also now this one our scientist got curiosity that how this land mass came how continents formed from where what is the original source of this continent today we are having lot of telescopes lot of satellites we are able to understand but in 1920s there is no such kind of technology and there is one there is a person called alfred wegener he said that initially all these continents were in a single place today we are seeing seven continents but according to him there was no seven, there are no seven continents but there is only one land mass that is called pangea so now put the heading continental drift theory continental drift theory so according to him there was only one land mass and one ocean that is called supercontinent called pangea super ocean called panthalassa it is given by alfred wegener now we are discussing this because whatever we are studying for whatever we are studying in geography ultimately it should be beneficial for our administration ultimately we are doing all these things why we are reading these many subjects 
we are preparing for administrative surveys what is the requirement of all these subjects why can't they directly give the job without knowing all these things today we are fighting for minerals you can say in international relations or within india also in some areas minerals are there some areas minerals do not have so to extract the minerals then we are even fighting in our own with our own people also jharkhand area chatisgarh and in those areas naxalism is very prevalent we indians uh, larger indians wanted minerals from there but there are tribal people without the their development we cannot extract easily if we try to force then it will backfire so in order to understand better across the globe these minerals are very important for economic development of today so these minerals are segregated in different parts how these minerals came and how similar kind of biodiversity prevailed in different continents suppose if you take some animals same type of animal is there in africa also and thousands of kilometers away in south america also when there is a huge water ocean how can animals can reach over there so that means earlier they might have similar kind or they are very close to each other so for that we need to have some idea how our earth is evolving and how these minerals biodiversity is being distributed across the globe supercontinent and super ocean pangaea and panthalassa so according to alfred wegener after some time this pangaea divided into two parts one is laurentia another one is gondwana land laurentia also called or laurasia also different spellings are there same thing pangaea became laurentia and gondwana and again that laurentia and gondwana further split into many pieces and that is how and here when laurentia and gondwana became pangaea became two parts they developed a new ocean called tethy sea tethy sea just note down below that actually this is not the original explanation for the entire continents but he was the pioneer in giving such kind of theory that's why we are studying about this this happened in 1920s now obviously the next generation will try to either question it or they either support it so obviously many people questioned this particular theory and they wanted to modify further with some other truth and they come up with uh, different theories that later became plate tectonic theory so now we are entering into plate tectonic theory this is continental drift theory any doubts tethy sea gondwana land suppose if we see some images this is the book written by him the origin of continents and oceans by alfred wegener so it was written in 1920s and later to prove his and there is now we will continue before going to plate tectonics we will see on what basis there is some evidence for continents have been drifted so this is the book he has written and to prove his theory he went to north pole also he tried to go to north pole also 
and somewhere to get some evidence but unfortunately he did not return from there so that's how the difficulties of those days but he laid foundation for this theory now we will see on what basis we are able to say that these land masses were once connected according to him this is the image now there was single continent completely in one place and later it divided into different pieces and later multiple places and now whatever we are seeing today that is how this particular single continent became multiple continents by today now here the evidence for this is first you note down the matching of continents the matching of continents jigsaw fit i will note down jigsaw fit now for this we should go to here in this location now you see here it appears that this land mass came out of this main land mass this is called jigsaw fit so if north south america fit into africa then both becomes a single continent so this is called jigsaw fit this is the first identifiable evidence to show that earlier these two land masses were connected together that is the first one you note down africa and south america not and some the shore lines of the shore lines the shore lines of africa and south america facing each other facing each other have a remarkable have a remarkable and unmistakable match that these two adjectives will give that unmistakable match this is one now next evidence is rocks of the same age next heading the next evidence rocks of the same age
blocks of the same age now where across oceans across oceans means ocean on that side and this side have the rocks which are of same age now if you take in brazil some rocks here and if you take some rocks here it appears that both rocks are born on the same time is it possible if they are really separated by these many thousands of kilometers and a birth is formed a rock is formed here a rock is formed the same size and it is not the single rock but the entire the mountain ranges if you take this part here what is the mountain range here in the eastern part of uh, north america appalachians and here in this location also this becomes now in this location also if you take the ages of the rocks from the mountain ranges it appears that these areas were formed on the same time period that means one understanding is earlier they were together later they got separated so rocks of same age and now later we see what is the force that dif uh, differed them what is the force that separated them these are the questions uh, done research by the later geologist and later scholars so for now only this much you know down rocks of the same age across the oceans now next one is tillite tillite spelling is t i l l i t e tillite it is a sedimentary rock this particular rock is available in different continents and this is also making evidence that this is the tillite rock and this rock is formed out of you know down this rock is formed this rock is formed out of deposits of glaciers 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 are any idea what is glacier moving it's like a moving ice sheet huge land mass of ice now this is the evidence coming from different places across the globe now what is the what are the different places if we understand the different places you will get an idea let's go to this there is one place here falkland and this one madagascar and here somewhere in australia also 
and Antarctica also. Now these places that tillite is coming, that was the rock formed by glaciation. Glaciation means huge climate of very cold climate. But this one, in which region it is in now? Which longitude is passing through that? Tropical. Tropic of Capricorn. That means tropical climate. And this one we can understand near Antarctica. And Australia also tropical climate, subtropical climate. If there was no movement on the continents, how come glaciation or cold climates are possible in these two? And that is comparable with Antarctica. The temperatures of Antarctica is very cold comparing with this area and this area. There must be some time in the geological history where all these three places are in single place and there was cold temperature at that time. And at that time glaciers were there and when they got separated, these glacial remains were there in the sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks means suppose some element or some rock is formed and this rock is gradually eroded and deposited in one place. Now this deposited one is surrounded by other material and whatever this material it was not disturbed for ages and this is the tillite that is like ancient glaciation. So now this undisturbed rock is there in this location also in this location Antarctica also Australia also. So tillite deposits. Now next one is placer deposits. Now it is related to gold. Before that you note down, you note down this. In Africa, in Africa, in uh, Falkland Island, Falkland Island, unit spelling, F-A-L-K-L-A-N-D, F-A-L-K, Falkland Island, Madagascar, Madagascar, Antarctica, and Australia. in Africa, Falkland Island, evidence is coming that there was, there was an extensive and prolonged glaciation there was an extensive and prolonged glaciation. Next heading is about placer deposits. Next evidence, placer, P-L-A-C-E-R. Placer deposits. These deposits are related to gold. These deposits are related to gold. Now, Ghana is a place in Africa, Brazil in South America. But these placer deposits are giving the evidence that the gold in this location and this location has the same origin or in other words gold is available here but the source or mother of this gold is located in this location so origin of this gold is located here 
how is it possible if they are separated by thousands of kilometers of ocean so somewhere at some point of time there should have been same land mass that is the placer deposit so gold not done the occurrence of the occurrence of rich placer deposits placer deposits of gold of gold in the ghana coast the occurrence of rich placer deposits of gold in the ghana coast and gold bearing veins and gold bearing b e a r i n g gold bearing veins v e i n s means the place where gold is produced gold bearing veins are in brazil so on one side gana another side is brazil next one is distribution of fossils fifth one distribution of fossils fossils are the remains of the dead body that a dead may be human beings also animals also plants also here the evidence is about this particular identical species of just note down identical species of plants identical species of plants and animals adopted to living on land adopted to living on land or in fresh water land or fresh or in fresh water are found on either side of the marine barriers either side of marine barriers full stop next statement now evidence lemurs l e m u r s lemurs occur in india lemurs occur in india madagascar and africa this is one evidence second evidence mesosaurus spelling is m e s o meso saurus meso meso like paleolithic mesolithic and saurus like dinosaurus s a u r u s saurus mesosaurus was a small reptile adapted to shallow brackish water the skeletons of these the skeletons of these are found skeletons are found only in two localities only in two localities one south africa 
other Brazil. So this is the Mesaurus, it looks like this. This type of evidence coming from South Africa. Another one is, now South Africa is located here. Now here South Africa and here Brazil. So all these evidences are giving that earlier South America and Africa were same landmass and over a period of time they got separated. Now this is the one continental drift theory in 1920s it developed. Later scientists they worked upon it and they confirmed that really there was some kind of movement in the continents but now this has changed. It is not the continent and there is a base called underground that is plate that a plate may be some part is continent, some part is ocean also. So ocean is not different according to continental drift theory, oceans are different, continents are different, only continents are moving. But according to plate tectonics theory, oceans and continents are also not two different things. There is a plate, on that plate some part may be continental crust, some part may be oceanic crust and this combined plate is moving either closing towards and are diverging away from each other. Now this is called plate tectonics theory. Now you note down. see so many plates from NCRT only this one. Now these are different plates that are distributed in different parts of the globe. Now you can see here this particular Australia. Australia is not separate from this particular location. So the base of this ocean and on Australia is there in the down. That is what now again we will go back to the initial, the beginning of the class, lithosphere. Just note down this plate tectonic theory. What is lithosphere in terms of crust and mantle? Crescent uppermost mantle. This is important. Solid mantle, uppermost solid mantle. Uppermost solid mantle. Consider this as uppermost solid mantle. There may be mountains also. oceanic crust. Oceans plus continents combinedly 
सपोज इफ देर इज एनी ब्रेक हियर इफ देर इज एनी ब्रेक दिस ओशन एंड कॉन्टिनेंट विल मूव दिस साइड एंड दट कॉन्टिनेंट एंड ओशन इफ देर इज एनी लैंडमार्क्स हियर दट मूव इन टू डिफरेंट डायरेक्शन नाउ बिलो इट इज द एस्थनोस्फियर एस्थनोस्फियर इज द विस्कस मेटीरियल एंड दिस विस्कस मेटीरियल इज मेकिंग द मूवमेंट ऑफ दीज प्लेट्स एंड दीज आर कॉल्ड प्लेट्स this viscous material online students clear now you have to imagine how this material is causing the plates causing the movement in the plates i will show image also video also how it is moving now this one is in which state solid or liquid asthenosphere plastic material so movable material it is movable and this is called we are calling it as magma when this magma comes out of any break on surface of the earth we are calling it as lava so if magma comes out of surface that becomes lava and this activity we are calling volcanic activity so volcano means the magma now the surf the temperatures of magma very high it is in thousands of degrees now this amount of magma if they suddenly comes out it will come like a a huge blast so that's why volcanic mountains sometimes it will break the crustal material also i will show the image now you see this is inner core outer core now mantle this mantle is in continuously in the movement now this movement is causing because of temperature difference for example if there is high pressure in one area low pressure is on the other side high pressure air moves towards the low pressure area same here also the high temperatures making lighter material they are going up solid material is coming down so heavy material comes down light material comes up that is creating continuous movement in the asthenosphere mantle zone now this is one image now you can see this one how the magma is continuously in the movement and the temperature see is thousands of degrees now if there is any break here that will come out and in the initial beginning phases of continental formation this magma got solidified and it formed into continents in the initial version today we have seven continents and sometimes here and there volcanic activities happening but in the beginning of the continental formation there was continuous upward movement and solidification of this magma so if you want to see that now you 
can see in the initial beginning of the phases now whenever that magma is coming out it is solidifying and it becoming cold part now whenever that got solidified it became continents but gradually the crust the width of crust gradually increased the crust the depth is 0 to 100 kilometers now if you include upper part of mantle that becomes a lithosphere that becomes 200 kilometers now you can see initially everything was on the surface the hot magma is on the surface now gradually the width of crust is gradually growing that is why as of today this is 100 kilometers maybe after billions of years maybe this amount will get increased again this is how initially when the earth formation started the surface the crustal width is very small and gradually when volcanic activity was continuously happening the width of continents was growing and in some places there was a heavy material coming out of the surface and that became different volcanic mountains they are in the form of mountain range also this is one particular you see this the magma inside oceans if inside oceans immediately it gets uh, solidified due to water and this becomes a uh, oceanic crust if it is on land that becomes a continental crust if it is in oceans that become oceanic crust now this is just a volcanic activity how when magma comes out of it now it has to break the plate and whenever breakage of the plate happens this kind of huge explosion takes place so just imagine continental crust oceanic crust below it uh, plate margins and below it magma now this is another version now you can see if there is continuous volcanic activity now it becomes like a mountain so that is how in oceans we find different islands those islands are like this they formed initially there was no island later when magma continuously coming out of inside mantle that is becoming continent or island this is one now you can see the magma this magma is converted into different now from this only different type of rocks are emerging the first stage of rock formation is igneous rock that we will see in the later but this is the mother material for the igneous rocks now this is how different continents formed and that activity is going on still in these boundaries in different places now just now you have to draw old map along with me first draw equator we'll start from equator zero degrees online students you please draw along with me now first start with south america 
you have to put one triangle here. South America passes in South America through which country? Equator Brazil. Brazil. Yes. We are drawing Brazil this side. Now you leave some space between this, this. What happened? Not good? Right, right. There's two curves. One more curve, one more curve, and one more curve. Now you draw one more line, Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. coming hmm. now this side also one curve this side one curve Curves. Any doubts? Doubts? Hmm. Then you draw Africa. Same like Brazil, one curve this side. Then now India, which line? First, second, third, which one? First one, now Gujarat. make it this one you complete this circle Mediterranean Ocean this one 
Mediterranean. Then you mix with the Indian line. Join with India. Now, here you put one box. One box just above Africa. What is this? Which country? Spain and Portugal. passes through Australia? Tropic, Tropic of Capricorn. Now just you cut this line like this. And you ensure India, it should not be directly below India. It is not exactly below India, it is uh, side. Otherwise you will put directly below India only. of times when I got this map. <laughs> so initially I also like that only. So Australia. 
Hello, students. Now clear? It's clear? Okay. Now we are in Australia. Now we are going to China. So Indonesia passes uh, equator passes through Indonesia. So this Vietnam. Bangladesh, then Vietnam, then China. Hmm. This one, and here, Indonesia. Or I think this one, this one. It's okay. Leave it, leave it. Whatever you have drawn. In next time, we can draw better. Now this is the earth, now this earth divided into different uh, plates. Now on down, Antarctica. Now this is the map. Now we are going to draw entire world divided into different plates. Now if you see here, there is a break in the mid of this Atlantic Ocean. That is called Atlantic, mid-Atlantic ridge. Now it is like a S-shape. You can see this S-shape. Yes, let's go to map. I will come to map, map. Is the one we just draw like this to show that there is crack in the mid of Atlantic uh, Atlantic Ocean. Now come back to this particular portion. Now you can see this is the crack. In the mid of the ocean, down under the ocean, there is opening in the crust. Now you imagine what happens if there is opening in the crust. The magma is coming out. The temperatures of magma very high and immediately the moment it comes to the surface, ocean water is there, so immediately it gets uh, solidified. Now again, the movement of magma continuously happens. For example, this one. Any 
Hi, everyone. Uh, now this one we will show how it looks in the down. Now do you see how magma is coming out? The moment it comes out, this plate moves that side and this plate this side. Mid oceanic ridge, ocean water. Now you'll see. This Asthenosphere, you can now imagine the asthenosphere in semi liquid state. The moment it comes out, this is the reason for so many earthquakes in these margins of the boundaries. And wherever these boundaries are there, wherever plate margins are there, there we will find earthquakes and volcanic eruption. And because of this continuous interaction, now this plate is moving this side and this plate is moving this side. And when there was no such movement in the beginning stage, in the beginning stage, Africa and, and Brazil area, Africa and Brazil area joined together. But because of this movement, Brazil is moving left side and Africa is moving that side. That is what exactly happening in the mid of the oceans. Now one evidence we have seen that the age of rocks is same across the oceans. Now you can see the moment it generates here, here it generates rock, igneous rock. Now the moment it generates igneous rocks here, in this side also, in this side also, same rock of same age. Now the moment it keep on moving left side, same age rock keep on moving distance. Now somewhere here, somewhere here, same rock formed once in the same time, but now they are apart and now thousands of kilometers away from each other. So now did you get how the asthenosphere is causing? This asthenosphere is the source of magma, source of lava in the volcanic eruption. Because of this, we have seen there is a continuous movement of asthenosphere magma also. Because of this movement, why that movement is causing? The temperature, temperature difference. That is called temperature gradient. This term gradient will come in atmosphere also. The pressure gradient we used to call. So pressure gradient means high pressure on one side, low pressure on the other side. Here temperature gradient means high temperature on one side, low temperature on the other side. Which one? In this one? Yes. Good question. Now let's go to Now inside earth there are two causes for the temperature. One is when the big bang took place. Now when the cloud is continuously in the moment the remedial, the Temperature, whichever coming from the Big Bang explosion, little bit temperature was remained there. That is called primordial temperature. That is inherent. That is one one. The second one is radioactivity. Initially, we have seen different type of elements. Radium, thorium, and radioactive elements are there. Because of that radioactive elements, there is continuous explosions within the earth and that is causing temperature differences. Primordial temperatures, radioactivity. Why radioactivity takes place? It is like a nuclear reactor in the deep down. So whenever uranium, thorium and other radioactive elements are continuously exchanging and because of this temperature is generating. Now did you get? Yes, sir. 
okay and because of this whenever there is radioactivity now heavy metals goes down light material comes up so light material comes up and heavy material goes down whenever heavy material goes down and light material comes up do you see some kind of circulation so this circulation happens across thousands of miles now this one one side it rotates on the other side it may rotate the other side now if you see this so continuous moment now you will see how earth is moving this side and that side just now observe only how this plate is moving and that plate is moving you will understand mid oceanic ridge now you see the rocks formed at that time now they are moving away now new rocks formed now they are moving away now new rocks so you observe these angles are new rocks so that is how now these rocks are angest rocks these rocks are oldest rocks now you understand so these are angest and these are oldest now if we go to this side now this side you will find here angest rocks here oldest appalachian mountains are located here some of them are formed in the earliest stages they are the oldest and this side these rockies are angest comparing with appalachians rocky and ends and here himalayas also here we are seeing one reason called divergence of the plates and here we call something called convergence of the plates whenever there is volcanic eruption takes place new rocks are formed when new rocks are formed those rocks may be may create volcanic mountains also and as big as rocky mountains as big as himalayas as big as ants mountains the image or video just we have seen what is happening in this location also now do you see why the age of this rock and this rock same age whenever there is a break continuous movement and this is pushing this side and this is pushing that side maybe at one point of time we see this end and that end may join together that may take billions of years but that is how continuous that is why volcanoes and earthquakes are continuously happening here and now so in in this location in afghanistan pakistan area recently also there was earthquake few months back because this plate is called now you note down so as of now you understand what happens when there is movement near the plates now we have to note down what are the plates across the globe now first one is this one you note down north american plate just you put heading uh, in that may image itself map itself north american plate south american plate african plate online students you mark it north american plate south american plate african plate eurasian plate
Eurasian plate. If you give the numbers, you give numbers to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now there is a plate here, this combined Indo Austral Australia plate. Indo, Australia and New Zealand all under one, that is one plate. Five. Now Pacific plate, one thing is there, I will show you this. Now this side, this side Pacific, we are globe, imagine globe, Pacific plate. Pacific plate, that is which one, sixth one? Now Australia, yeah, Antarctica, seventh one. So seven continents seven plates. Now you get idea how different planets, uh, different uh, continents created. Initially there was uh, no continent, initially there was uh, initial the only magma only coming out and forming some rocks and some material. And when the magma continuously erupted outside, that has created these land masses and still land masses are getting created. And if you see somewhere, suddenly some kind of uh, islands may emerge at one point of time. When there is any huge amount of uh, volcanic activity and if that volcanic activity comes out of the surface of the water, that appears like an island. So that is how island, chain of islands, if you see Andaman Nicobar Islands, they are formed because of volcanic activity. This chain of islands will, sorry, this side, chain of islands, they merge with uh, Arkan Yoma mountain range. So there is a break whenever there is a difference or whenever two different plates come together. Sometimes they come together, sometimes they go away from each other. This is one example of going away. This plate is coming this side, that plate is coming that side. But when it comes to Himalayas, Indian plate is moving towards uh, Australian and this is colliding. So this is how plate tectonic theory explains how continents formed. Okay, now you see Red Sea. Re Sorry? Eurasian and uh, Indian Australia plate uh, colliding each other. Now we see in this map. These are called seven major plates. Apart from these seven major plates, there are small minor plates also. We will see some of the examples. These major plates you see Eurasian plate, African plate, North American plate, South American plate. Eurasian that is coming that side and Indo-Australian plate. Now you see these margins. Do you see these margins? And wherever you see the straight lines, that is divergent boundary. Divergent means they are going away from each other. And wherever this you will see, this is convergent boundary. This you see? Converging means uh, colliding, coming together. Two plates are coming together. Now you see this also, Himalayas. 
and arcanuma and this chain there was a question in 2014 i think why earthquakes and volcanic activity is more in this location now you did you get the answer why volcanic activity is more in this location because here plates are converging on one side pacific plate on the other side eurasian plate on this side north american plate and that chain is continuously caroline plate these are small plates or minor plates caroline nagica cocos caribbean plates these are very very small minor plates and these plates continuously in the motion because whenever magma comes out these plates try to move that magma moves these plates and whenever that movement comes earth breaks or earthquake comes this is how when tsunami came tsunami came near indonesia that time but that has a ripple effect in different parts but the source of earthquake is somewhere here because of this movement so we used to find in afghanistan pakistan in india also we find in delhi also earthquake used to come so because of this kind of plate margins so this is plate tectonic theory whatever continental drift theory explained by alfred wegener initially he was the pioneer even though he could not explain fully but plate tectonic theory explains there is movement of continents and oceans together so now did you get idea how earthquakes and volcanoes are formed now if we see this this is one place in 2011 there was a huge tsunami in japan and one nuclear reactor also got damaged and the entire world afraid of that particular damage because it is located on the boundaries of these plates this is the pacific plate now you can see how much big pacific plate is and this side north american plate this side japan and eurasian plate this side indo austral plate and this side south american plate so this is how you have to imagine now you have to imagine three angles one is globe another one is plane map another one is deep inside did you get you have to imagine all the three angles to understand what is happening on the earth and on top of it you have to imagine this is rotating and not only rotating revolving also around the sun so those who can have good command over this imagination for them geography is very easy it's not difficult and it is very interesting also to imagine while giving answers also you can imagine and you can write the answers and you can give a proper map and you can just give only this map also suppose for that question you can draw only map of this side and you can put pacific plate north america india only this side of the map only you can give you need not to give entire world map also entire world map also not required they are asking about this particular region you can give only this region so try to imagine geography if you are good in imagination then geography is easy for you so just keep rotating now here in our case this one australia and india are located on the same according to alfred wegener this area is different this area is different but according to plate tectonics theory they they both are there on the same plate and if plate moves both india and uh, australia move together and big and on top of it there are minor plates also and because of this minor plates some movement may also come to different areas nearby 
so major plates and minor plates activity is causing the movement of continents and oceans is that clear up to this online students clear now if you see this image whatever place we are seeing this now continents are on the move continuously now they are not going to stay in one place around 50 crore years ago this was the condition of globe and now 42 crores years ago this is the condition now 30 crores 12 crores and present this is the condition now after 100 crores years maybe something else might be the shape of this earth we all become fossils <laughs> so that's all so this is how the earth okay this is the another imagination you have to have this imagination also globe also inside deep earth now deep underground magma is flowing out of just below this surface magma is flowing those are called convective currents current current means movement that we will i will tell you so so far clear how these planets are forming how pla plates are moving how many plates are there how many major plates are there Seven. what is this plate Seven. this one Seven. this one Seven. this one eurasia here europe europe and asia both are same plate now this one indo, indo australia now this one pacific plate now here if you see we just for now imagine you remove entire antarctic ocean on uh, the atlantic ocean's water just imagine there is no water now this is the condition of the surface of the ocean few minutes now imagine this is north america africa south america just imagine there is no water if there is no water means this is also like a continent if there is no water definitely people will go and settle there but because of water people are not able to go and nowadays people are trying to conquest these areas only indian ocean now many people are entering into indian ocean because they consider oceans also just extension of the countries and deep underground there are lot of minerals and whoever controls the oceans they can control the minerals there and also if you can reach this way and it is very easy to drill for example here you have to drill around 10 kilometers or 20 kilometers from the surface of the earth but if you can go there you can just drill 5 kilometers to get the minerals sea bed so this is how now if you imagine this is the condition of this is the mid oceanic ridge it is also like a continent on continent we are seeing different type of on the top of it can you tell what are the different features we see on the continents mountains we see plains we see or just 
mountains are highest then plateaus we see plains rivers then on mountains we see valleys also now th all these features we see underground also under water also before second world war we were thinking that there is nothing just below the water do you know where is pearl harbor pearl harbor what is pearl harbor near japan okay what is the importance of pearl harbor in history japan attacked american base yes yes so now do you know where it is exactly hawaii island do you know somewhere in the middle i think this one now you see japan is this america is this now it, it reach difficult to reach that side now it found that it is easy to attack they attacked now this is the point where usa also involved in the second world war but we are discussing this for one reason and now america entered into war now naturally they will send the lot of warships to attack japanese side now there was a geologist also now second world war many civilians also enter into the war also so many civilians become soldiers scientist also some of the scientist geologist and climatologist also became soldiers of second world war one of the soldier was harry hess and he was a geologist and he also became soldier and he was given the admiral means navy now his ship is containing the technology of sonar what is sonar it's the technology to identify the enemy movement so it is like a sound waves suppose if suppose if ship is coming from this side so they will send the signal and if someone coming from this side the sound wave it will come hit it and it will go back now based on the frequency this person will come to know that someone is coming so that the enemy movement can be easily at track it now it is called radar now modern technology this is uh, we are talking about second world war sonar now it is radars now this person is the commander of one ship and sound waves he is a scientist or a geologist and now this ship is sending the sound signals in different locations and deep down also because submarines might be there submarines enemies can come now there are reflections of these sound waves from different angles with different directions so earlier they were thinking only no one was there but how sound waves is coming that means these many enemies were there these many japanese were there or what in underground don't know so that is how this is the reason for the reflection of sound waves because deep underground there are so many mountains and because of the mountains they are hitting the sound wave hit, sound waves are hitting the mountains and they are coming back and it was come to know that so plane is not the so ocean plain also is not like without any relief but there are so many things on the surface of the ocean it is like a continent and on the continent there also mountains are there here also valleys are there here also plateaus are there so same whatever we are identifying on the top we are able to see that but under water we are not able to see but this is the condition under water also so here also we will find plains also plateaus also here if you see abyssal plain abyssal plain is the the down southern the lower most plain area and we see canyons also like huge valleys 
there is a trench called mariana trench mariana trench is near between china and america only uh, hawaii guam guam islands where americans have base also and the depth of that valley is 11 kilometers mount everest height is 8 kilometers but the depth of mariana trench is 11 kilometers now you can see so there are even bigger than mount everest also the different relief features so this is what if we observe just if we imagine without any water it is also a continuation of earth surface continuation of the earth surface now because of this uh, huge valleys then lot of amount of water whenever atmosphere was forming when water was forming in the early stages now all these depths were filled with lot of water now rivers are carrying now rivers are carrying lot of sediments from the mainland and these sediments are carrying lot of salts and these salts and already sodium potassium the minerals are also there and all these are combinedly made oceans as salt now to get back normal water we have to remove all the salts then only it is possible but this condition was happening for billions of years so that's why the amount of salts in ocean water is very high so this is how you have to imagine underground also under washed what ocean also we have similar kind of relief features like on the earth like on the continent so this is called continental crust this is called oceanic crust now suppose if you see here this is what is this Spain, Portuguese. Now here, North America. Here Saint Lawrence. Now if you see, there are wherever warm water and cold water meets, and there a unique feature of fishing activities takes place in those locations. They are very much ideal for the fishing growth because of hot and cold water combination. So now deep underground, this is what happening. Just you imagine. Now this is the place where we find lot of biodiversity also. Coral reefs we will find. Animal, sharks, fishing. So, so many things. Now again, if you go towards the equator, a different type of animals animal plant and animal plants biodiversity will find if we go towards the pole side a different type of animals and plants we will find so this image is just to show you that imagine if you there is no water oceans are also just a continuation of the planet continents so is that clear now so this is how plate tectonics and continental drift theory explain that once there was single landmass, later got merged into different continents. Now, last thing you just note down the importance of plate tectonics. Down. Online students, note down this the significance of plate tectonics. Almost all major landforms, almost all major landforms formed are due to landforms formed 
are due to plate tectonics. Just a second here. Here we are saying almost all. We are not saying all the. Why we are saying that? No, they are all part of plate tectonics. Before plates formed, when Big Bang, so moment of the, so in the initial stages, even much before plates formed, so plate itself also formed because of some other activity. That's why almost all major landforms formed due to plate tectonics. Mm -hmm. Yes. Plate tectonics, different people are there. Mackey, one person is there, just note down. Mackey and Mackenzie, two people are there, just I'll give. Yes, in 19, just note down this particular statement. In 1967, Mackenzie and Parker, spelling you see, M-C-K-E-N, Mackin, G, Z-I-E, Mackenzie and Parker, P-A-R-K-E-R, Parker. suggested the theory of plate tectonics. Full stop. Morgan, M-O-R-G-A-N, Morgan, later outlined, later outlined the theory in 1968. Then, now continue the significance of plate tectonics. New minerals, new minerals are thrown up. New minerals are thrown up from the core with the magmatic eruptions. Now, do you see this importance of this statement? New minerals. Now, deep underground, there are so many minerals. Uranium, for example, radioactivity is happening deep underground. So, whenever volcanic eruption takes place, uranium mineral may come out. That becomes very important uh, for human beings on top of the surface. So, if, if nothing happens, we will dig out entire earth also. <laughs> but something is happening, we are leaving. So we are searching for planet outside and we will try to blast those planets <laughs> completely. So new minerals are thrown up. So this is one of the advantage of knowing about geography. So if we know about our earth, then we can easily understand the other planets. Suppose if no human beings, no one was there, then we can exploit those resources for our human benefit. So new minerals are thrown up from the core with the magmatic eruptions. Now economically, valuable minerals like, economically valuable minerals like copper and uranium like copper and uranium are found near the plate boundaries. Now do you get this meaning of the statement? Near plate boundaries, magma is coming out. Within magma, so many min minerals. From present knowledge of crustal plate movement,
from present knowledge of crustal plate movement the shape of land masses the shape of land masses in future can be predicted land masses in future can be predicted for example for example if the present trend continues present trend means the movement of plates north and south america will separate no canal panama canal <laughs> north and south america will separate if you know history this is the importance you can enjoy geography also north and south america will separate a piece of land will separate a piece of land will separate from the east coast of africa now you imagine persian gulf and red sea persian gulf and red sea so they are move, moving you now some day they may separate or in the african eastern side also there is rift valley nile river near there is again like mid atlantic ocean ridge there is a huge ridge so it may separate american con africa also into two pieces australia will move closer to asia australia will move closer to asia India Australia Eurasia but sir Australia moves in India also okay let us see the plates so this statement is saying suppose this plate now this is the plate now this plate is because of convergence. convergence so that means this is moving this side and this is moving this side and this one convergence so this is moving this side this side so this is movement this is you see this is what is this divergence mean this is moving up. up and this one moving this side so upward 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 are you getting so but what will be the impact of india because the whole plate is moving right so india may turn this way <laughs> it may turn we don't know what it will turn now this is also moving it may break the eurasian plate and it will move further <laughs> so that's what it is already earlier india was here earlier india was here it was continuously moving that's why himalayas formed because it is pushing eurasian plate eurasian plate is breaking and some indian plate also breaking so with that break only himalayas are forming is it clear or any doubts earlier india was not here it was down it was continuously moving northward so india also will move further eurasian towards eurasian plate in ncert itself we have this image you can see india is moving from south to northward so that is the last statement okay this is the significance of plate tectonics so now is it clear how underground under water what is happening there is a huge volcano inside the earth 
and this is creating magma when it comes up that becomes lava it is creating volcanic mountains volcanoes and earthquakes so this is what today's tomorrow we will see in the next class we will see about uh, earthquakes and volcanoes also and it creates lot of uh, rocks igneous rock then sedimentary rocks then metamorphic rocks and up to minerals is important to understand uh, different minerals in the economic geography and sir forces also forces yeah we will see so one by one but if you understand plate movement then it is easy to imagine later online students clear